They dig spiral burrows, weave baskets from leaves, or raise their young in nests made of their own skin. Welcome to the secret lives of the world's most unconventional homemakers. You won't believe what length some animals go to just to lay their eggs. And it all starts with a simple question. What if the safest place on Earth was something no predator ever imagined? Take the male pufferfish. This little guy isn't just swimming in circles. He's creating an underwater masterpiece. Picture this. A fish that spends days carving a precise geometric mandala into the seabed all to impress a mate. Each ripple, each ridge is sculpted with his fins. And when he's done, it's not just beautiful, it's functional. The grooves help funnel fine sand into the center, creating a nest that cushions the eggs and protects them from currents. It's a temporary love letter etched in the ocean floor. Now, head to Australia where the Malifal doesn't build a nest, it engineers one. Imagine burying your eggs in a compost heap that's exactly what this bird does. It scrapes together sand and organic material to form a massive mound, then lays its eggs deep inside. The rotting vegetation generates heat, and like a living thermostat, the male constantly checks and adjusts the mound's temperature by adding or removing debris. It's a self-regulating incubator, no power cord needed. But what if you're a spider and you want your children to hatch in the safest spot possible? The Australian peacock spider has a flair for drama. Not only does the male dance in a dazzling display of color to win a mate, but after mating, the female crafts an egg sac and guards it obsessively. Some spiders go further, like the erisus or ladybird spider. Once the eggs hatch, the mother doesn't leave. She becomes food. That's right. She literally liquefies herself so her spiderlings can feed on her body. Motherhood in the insect world is often a one-way street. And then there's the tailor bird. This tiny songbird doesn't build a nest in the open. Instead, it stitches leaves together using plant fibers, like a green origami pouch just hanging from a branch. With the precision of a seamstress, it pierces the leaf edges and threads them closed to create a hidden cradle for its eggs. The result is not just clever, it's nearly invisible to predators. But not all nests are made with twigs and threads. The horned coot in the Andes builds an island. Yes, an actual island. These birds gather stones from the lake bed, up to one and a half tons of them, and pile them up into a mound above water level. On top of this rocky foundation, they construct a softer nest of algae. Why go to such lengths? Well, to avoid land predators entirely. The eggs are safe, floating in the middle of nowhere on a fortress of rock. In stark contrast, the green lynx spider doesn't build any elaborate nest at all. She goes full security detail. After laying her eggs in a silken sack, she stands guard day and night striking at anything that comes too close. She doesn't eat during this period, sometimes for weeks, sacrificing her health to protect the future. Her nest may be minimal, but her defense is relentless. Meanwhile, the edible nest swiftlet offers a more lucrative take on nesting. These birds build their nests entirely out of hardened saliva, stuck high on cave walls. Yes, you read that right, bird spit and humans pay hundreds, even thousands, for them to be harvested as a delicacy in bird's nest soup. These glistening white cradles, painstakingly assembled over weeks, are both a biological marvel and a commodity. Over in Africa, sociable weavers take community living to the extreme. Their nest isn't a nest, it's a condominium. Dozens of birds collaborate to build a single massive structure that can weigh over a ton and house up to 300 individuals. Each family has its own apartment, with interior rooms warmer than outer ones. The nest persists for generations, often outlasting the birds that built it. If that's not strange enough, meet the Surinam toad. This amphibian skips the whole builder nest idea and turns its own back into one. During mating, the male embeds fertilized eggs into the female's skin. 
Her back swells and morphs into a honeycomb of tiny pockets. The eggs grow inside these chambers until the toadlets literally burst out of her skin. It's bizarre, it's grotesque, and it works. And lastly, in the forests of Southeast Asia, the bowerbird redefines what a nest is even for. Instead of caring for eggs, the male builds a decorative bower, a runway of sticks adorned with colorful objects like berries, bottle caps, and even plastic toys. He doesn't raise chicks there. The bower exists solely to impress a mate. Think of it as the peacock's tail, but architectural. So next time you hear the word nest, don't picture a simple clump of twigs. Picture an underwater sculpture, a stitched leaf, a cave ceiling crusted in saliva. Picture a living incubator or a fortress of stone. These animals don't just lay eggs. They innovate, they engineer, they sacrifice. And in doing so, they remind us that parenting in the wild is anything but predictable. It's poetic, brutal, and mind-blowingly inventive.